Thank you very much. Let me do a slight housekeeping matter. My wife is not here, not because she boycotted the parade. <laughs> Neither it is because she divorced me. She's out of state, and I'm sure she's watching me as I am about, about to deliver this address this afternoon. I was reminded of the song by the winner of this year's Carlos Lipso competition. So I have but so I need to clear this up. Let me recognize the presence of His Excellency Charles Savre, President of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and Mrs. Savre. Honorable Alex Boyd Knight, Speaker of the House of Assembly. My cabinet colleagues, your leadership, Justice Buddy Brooks, and your Lordship Justice Errol Thomas, Resident Judges. Your Lordship, the Most Reverend Gabriel Malze, Bishop of Roseau. Bishop Bill Daniel, and our dear Reverend of the Methodist Church. Your Excellencies, the former President of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and your spouses, your Excellencies, the members of the Diplomatic Corps and other visiting dignitaries, other honorable members of Parliament, members of the Consular Corps, Your Worship, Mayor Cecil Joseph and Mrs. Joseph, Chairman of, Permanent, of Commissions, Permanent Secretaries, Awardees, members of the media, distinguished guests, visiting Dominicans, Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will. Fellow Dominicans, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the largest and most powerful audiences I have ever seen assembled for an Independence Day Parade. It is always a pleasure for me to see, to see you gather in such large numbers to witness our disciplined forces on parade, to celebrate the achievements of our country and those who will receive awards today and to address you. Our discipline and uniform groups are immaculately attired, reflecting their pride in serving our country. I salute all on parade here this afternoon. Independence Day Parade 2013 will go down in history as among the most vibrant. It is a source of great hope for our nation when babies, children, young people, adults and elderly, male and female, can all embrace our culture and nationhood through active participation in our independence celebrations. The atmosphere here today of patriotism and pride is similar to the euphoria which was experienced at last Friday's National Youth Rally, which also created new records of participation. Your presence tells me that you have distinguished right from wrong, sense from nonsense, responsibility from immaturity, love of country over love of a political party. It is with pride that I welcome my fellow Dominicans, members of the Diplomatic Corps, specially invited guests, awardees, and friends. 
I say a special welcome also to persons from the diaspora who have traveled from far and wide to celebrate with us today. The presence of all of you here is a clear demonstration that on 3rd November, you have made the time to salute our beloved country. It is a true spirit of unity and brotherhood. We welcome the contingent of cadets from St. Thomas in the United States Virgin Islands. These young people, some of whom are Dominican, are here to fraternize and to build bridges of friendship with our own cadet corps and we thank them for joining us in celebration of our independence. <laughs> Unique cadets from St. Thomas have also created history in Dominica by being the first group to stay at the new stored troops barracks hostel at the Fort Shirley at the Cabrits which has been restored by this government as a community hostel to accommodate local, regional, and international groups like yours. We hope that you're enjoying your stay here in Dominica. I'm aware that there are many of you listening via radio and the internet who would have liked to be here, but for various reasons, you are not able to do so. I send you greetings and best wishes. The theme of our celebration, One Mission, One Dominica, Celebrating 35, calls on us to find that quality of love for Dominica that impels us to dispel our prejudices and differences with one another and to find avenues of cooperation and collaboration in pursuing the mission of building our nation. We will not always agree on everything, but if we treat each other with respect and coming to engaging in civil dialogue, then we will discover that there are many matters on which we agree and on those which we can therefore act in unison for the betterment of Dominica. The mission of the government, which I am privileged and honored to lead, has been to build a nation that is uniquely ours to an advanced stage of development. We have placed this country on a path marked by people-centered progress in the use of science and technology and the creation of employment opportunities on a path where culture and the arts can flourish, on a path of tolerance where the respect for, di of, for dignity of our fellow men transcends your weaknesses and frailties. A nation where everyone, no matter what his status, likes and preferences, has a place at the table of nation building. It is happening to note that the vast majority of our citizens remain focused on national development and have been rallying with government in its efforts. My friends, the celebration of the 35th anniversary of our independence has to include the celebration of the achievers who have demonstrated their loyalty to our nation with disciplined and dedicated service over a sustained period of time. Shortly, His Excellency the President will be bestowing awards to a selection of deserving citizens. Their names will be forever recorded in the history of nation building and will outlast the awards they will receive today. We also want to single out for recognition some of those among us who are blazing a path of excellence and promise and who stand out as models of inspiration for you professionals, and the wider society. New opportunity signals as we celebrate the 45th anniversary of our independence. Opportunities that will open up, that will open up as we penetrate a new frontier of our development. 
This new frontier is to be found in geothermal energy. Four weeks ago, we hosted a consultation in Rosa, comprising 15 of our development partners, regional organizations, and global experts in geothermal energy development, and representatives of local community and private sector interests. The purpose of the consultation was to share information and exchange views on Dominica's approach to geothermal energy development. The group of development partners in attendance commended the government on its geothermal program and pledged the support for its further development. Assured of the technical and financial support for commercializing the geothermal resource of the Rosa Valley, we can pronounce with greater assurance our vision for Dominica as the undisputed nature isle of the Caribbean, a globally recognized sustainable energy advocate and a leader for small island developing states. We intend to make Dominica the first carbon negative economy in our hemisphere and will continue our efforts in promoting geothermal energy as a leading answer to creating employment, lower energy costs, and increased competitiveness in the private sector. Within a week, drilling of the first product production and reinjection wells will commence. This is the precursor to the construction of a small geothermal plant of 15 to 20 megawatts for supplying electricity to the local market. The plant is expected to become operational by the end of 2015, and consumers can expect to see an initial drop of about 30% in the electricity bill. Negotiations are in progress with a French consortium for building a 100 megawatt geothermal plant, which will supply electricity to Guadeloupe and Martinique. As the negotiations proceed, we are becoming more and more confident that an agreement will be arrived at, which will be of significant benefit to the people of Dominica. Fellow Dominicans, ladies and gentlemen, government has invested heavily in agriculture, a sector which grew by over 5% in 2012. This has resulted in us achieving a certain level of food security in Dominica. Now that the abattoir is being constructed in Laiupa, it's almost complete. The country is now positioned to achieve self-sufficiency in the supply of poultry and pork. The opportunity is now wide open for existing and potential poultry and pork farms or young men and women to take up the challenge of supplying these products to the nation. We are encouraged by the effort of one company which has decided to establish two hatcheries to supply young chicks to the market. We are hopeful that others will follow the example and make the decision to contribute to the nation's requirements for dietary protein, create jobs at home, and save foreign exchange. Let me today remind all existing and potential farmers that under the apprenticeship and mentorship programs, assistance in the form of a contribution to wages is available to any farmer who is willing to engage a young entrepreneur interested in establishing an agricultural enterprise. Both the Aid Bank and the National Cooperative Credit Union have responded to the call for further investment in agriculture by introducing highly concessionary financing to farmers. The facilities available from these institutions will augment those of government in the agricultural investment unit and via support programs to the National Development Foundation of Dominica. Fortunately, government has had the foresight and has invested heavily in the infrastructure required for successfully conducting trade in agricultural commodities under the current international rules. 
Equipment to be installed in the recently completed prop houses will soon be purchased for financing facilities made, ab made available through the CARICOM Development Fund. The final link in the production and export chain that has been tackled is transportation. An allocation of $4 million was made in this year's budget to go towards the purchase of an appropriate vessel for transporting agricultural and other products. Discussions are ongoing with interested and knowledgeable parties for finalizing the purchase and operation of the chosen field, chosen vessel at the soonest. Fellow Dominicans, ladies and gentlemen, God has blessed us with a country that is able to produce more than we can consume at any one time. Evidence of this was on display at the market day for difference this year. The markets were overflowing with an abundance of produce of a wide variety, a clear indication that the farmers are responding to the initiatives of government to boost production. To encourage the emergence of other products and new industries, government, within the next three months, will establish a fund for innovation and development in agro-industry. The fund will be targeted at agricultural communities and at farmers' groups and individuals with the interest and motivation in adding value to agricultural raw material by converting them to marketable finished products. This initiative will not only eliminate waste, but it will allow for the farmer to spend more time on his farm. The hotel and resort sector is showing great promise, growth, and expansion. The Rosalie and Secret Bay resorts have achieved the distinction of being ranked by the prestigious magazines Travel and Leisure and Condé Nast Traveler among the best intimate hotels in the world. The success of Secret Bay revealed that the need for expansion of the resort, which was successfully carried out recently. There are a number of properties of varied sizes which have opened the doors to the public in recent months. We should be in a position to conclude very soon the negotiations for the management of the Cabritz Hotel. Training for potential employees is ongoing and administered by the Small Business and Employment Agency in collaboration with the Dominica State College. We can also celebrate the successful start of the cruise season. Due to the efforts of government, there will be a 20% increase in cruise ship calls over that of the last season. I call on all stakeholders in the tourism and cruise business to conduct their affairs in a manner that does not undermine the current promise of growth of the sector. Fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, government has made the creation of employment a priority. According to International Labour Organization, ILO, global youth unemployment stands at 12.6% and 73 million young people will be without work in 2013. The ILO calls for action on youth unemployment. The government of Dominica concurs with the recommendation of the ILO for the adoption of, and I quote, fiscally sustainable and targeted measures, public employment programs, employment guarantee schemes, labor intensive infrastructure programs, wage and trading subsidies, and other specific youth employment interventions, end of quote. This financial year, the government is investing over $9 million into the Employment and Small Business Support Unit for small business development, employment, and job creation initiatives. I wish to announce at this time that through the National Employment Program, which will be officially launched on 2 December 2013, the government of Dominica will engage over 400 people in direct employment initiatives.
As a matter of fact, already 95 individuals who have completed hospitality apprenticeship training in Portsmouth have received confirmed placements at over 25 hospitality establishments in the North and will be engaged for a period of one year. The following also form part of the initiative. 240 individuals who have completed training with the Employment and Small Business Agency, Adult Education Division, Basic Needs Trust Fund, and the Dominica State College will be engaged in an on-the-job training and mentorship program with over 80 businesses and organizations across the island. 35 university graduates will receive opportunities for internships with the government and other statutory bodies, including the Aid Bank, Invest Dominica Authority, and the Dominica State College, to name a few. Ten communities will receive support to hire over 50 individuals on special community projects, including community tourism initiatives, resource center management, school feeding programs, and landscaping. Through a new education mentorship program, over 50 young people will be employed to provide after-school care, tutoring, and homework assistance to primary and secondary school students in communities across the island. A number of other initiatives will be launched in 2014 to provide specialized assistance to expansion of small and medium-sized businesses with job creation potential. A package of direct marketing support, technical assistance, and financing will be made available for such businesses. These employment initiatives will provide recent graduates and unemployed youth with a valuable opportunity to gain experience and job-related skills and knowledge. We also believe that the business community will gain significant benefits from the additional human resource support that this initiative will provide. My dear friends, the business and investment environment is dynamic and competitive. This is especially so with offshore data entry and call center enterprises. To survive and compete in this sector, the trick is to always have in place a modern state-of-the-art infrastructure capable of attracting new entrants with minimum disruption. We applaud the efforts of the Aid Bank for remaining on top of the game in that regard. The government is, in, is at an advanced stage of discussion with a United States-based company to establish a new call center that would employ up to 400 persons in Dominica. These new jobs will become available to employees who were displaced by the downsizing of Clare Harbour in the first instance. Interviews with some of them and others have already commenced. The discussions run into a slight snap with respect to false information sent to the company concerning the rate of attrition of workers in Dominica. I am confident, however, that with our intervention, we shall get these negotiations back on track, and very shortly, we should be in a position to update the country on this very significant development. To complement the Small Business Initiative administered by the government, we will enter into a loan agreement with the National Development Foundation of Dominica, NDFD, through which a $5 million low interest loan facility will be channeled for on lending to start up an existing small businesses in Dominica. The first two million dollars will be made available this very month of November. So to persons who have a business idea and need the startup capital to turn vision into reality, your government through the NDFD shall provide the helping hand. Ladies and gentlemen, the health of the nation is of paramount importance. Healthcare remains a priority for this administration. And despite the pro proactive policies and heavy investments made in this area, the escalating cost of healthcare 
influenced almost fully by external factors, remains a concern. We must address this problem as a nation. I wish on this occasion to remind all that there is a level of personal responsibility that must come into play in respect of taking care of themselves. Government has received draft designs from the People's Republic of China for a new hospital. The designs are currently being reviewed by health personnel and advisors to ensure that the new hospital, when it is finally delivered, meets our expectations and requirements. Meanwhile, since the announcement of government's intention to purchase some much-needed equipment, we have been engaged in ensuring that these pieces of equipment become available to the people of Dominica in the shortest possible time. I must report to you that by 20 of December 2013, the new CT scan machine should be delivered to the Ministry of Health. The new mammogram machine is expected to be de delivered on 21st November 2013. A gastroscopic and colonoscopic system is expected to be delivered by 15 November 2013. The procurement of a surgical tower laparoscope is expected to begin by 25 November 2013. And government has allocated $1.5 million for the purchase of an MRI. Additional pieces of equipment have been recommended and resources are being sourced for the inclusion in the purchase. All of these pieces of equipment, together with the construction of a new hospital, seek to ensure that we bring better health services to the doorsteps of our people and reduce the cost to access health care overseas. Health is a key area of focus for this administration and in the not too distant future, Certainly, before the end of this year, I will make a major announcement in that regard. Fellow Dominicans, ladies and gentlemen, another achievement of this government is the significant improvement to the road network. We can now boast that most of our major roads are in good condition. Reducing the time of travel, saving on fuel, and reducing the wear and tear on vehicles. Engineering designs and survey work for the upgrade and rehabilitation of the East Coast roads from Pocasse right through to the White River is currently ongoing. 17 feeder roads, including those in Salisbury, will be improved. Seventeen feeder roads will be improved with work expected to start during the second quarter of next year. And of course, we await the opening of the Poncasse to Melville section of the new highway. In the area of education, all of our citizens, young and old alike, believe that education is the passport to success. This recognition has been emboldened with the completion of a new Dominica State College and with the realization that soon our young people will be able to remain right here at home and earn a university degree. The record enro enrollment for this semester and, and graduation of 320 students from the college just a few, few weeks ago is evidence that government's education policy is working and delivering the expected fruits. Fellow Dominicans, we continue to respond to the high demand for housing solutions around the country. Never in the history of Dominica have our people been, been so inspired and moved to own their own homes at the rate that we are receiving queries and applications. 
This is very commendable indeed. Our response has included the construction of houses throughout the country and includes the commencement of the construction of 60 apartment units in Emsall and Baffer State. It includes the regularization of squatters and land development. And it includes the renovation of homes of many disadvantaged persons throughout the country. Government intends to continue to work with our citizens to facilitate where, wherever and however possible to ensure that every Dominican has an acceptable housing standard. Central government has just released a further $3 million for use in home repairs across the island, and another $4 million will be made available in grant form for the elimination of pit latrine initiative, which I spoke about a few weeks ago. I am totally dumbfounded that there will be persons in this country who would oppose such a program at this time in our nation's development. Nonetheless, we shall press ahead and I insist that pitch latrines or what some call outhouses shall be a thing of a part in Dominica on the watch as of this country. Within the last two years, 63 loans totaling $10.5 million was loaned to public officers for the Government Housing Loans Board. We will continue to support the work of the board to ensure that the housing needs of public officers are addressed. In addition to all that has gone on and which is currently underway in the housing subsector, a further $5 million will be funneled through the aid bank for lending at very low interest rates to persons who fall in the low and who would not normally qualify. That money will be available in the month of December. Fellow Dominicans, ladies and gentlemen, these times the world over. But we shall do what we must to guarantee our people a satisfactory standard of living and a higher quality of life. Our projections for GDP growth for 2013 is 1.6 percent. Given the global challenges, the achievements of, of growth is not easy. But we have stayed the course and we have ensured that the platform for reducing poverty remains intact. However, reaping the benefits that are held in that promise calls for each of us to commit to the mission of pursuing excellence in our approach to work and in the conduct of our lives. Very importantly, we must promote the positives about Dominica. We must work to build and not tear down this country. We need, as Dominicans, resident at home and abroad to get into the business of promoting Dominica and all that it offers. We need to wrap our utterances in the flag. We need to say and do what helps to build the image of our country. There are many friends and development partners of Dominica who continue to collaborate with us in our development efforts. I say a special thank you to the government of the People's Republic of China. And in, in Chinese, they say xie xie, which means thanks. And I want to say thank you, mucho gracias, a el pueblo bolivario republic of Venezuela. To the European Union, to Morocco, Cuba, the United States of America, the United Kingdom, France, and Japan, among others. Your continued assistance to us is demonstrative of your mutual respect and friendship and the confidence that you have in this government's ability to make good use of these resources. On behalf of the government and people of Dominica, I say a heartfelt thank you.
fellow Dominicans, ladies and gentlemen, their economic hardships the world over. There are social challenges across every continent, but your government is working and your government is delivering. You can see evidence of our numerous achievements all around you. You have heard a number of new initiatives for further development and advancement of our country. Now is not the time to change course. Now is not the time to listen to false prophets making unrealistic promises. Let us continue to work together on the path of progress that we have charted. I remain concerned about some attitudes and behaviors in our society. We must encourage hard work and productivity. We must build a spirit of national pride. Let us make a 45th birthday pledge in a moment of peace. Let us move forward together with one mission advancing growth and development for the benefit of all of us here in this country. I want to wish you, my dear brothers and sisters, a happy 45th anniversary of independence. May God continue to bless this beautiful fair land called the Commonwealth of Dominica. May God bless you, may God bless your families, and may God continue to watch over us. And as our dear Bishop, Bishop Daniel Craig, we must all submit to God. And I therefore continue to submit to the supremacy of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you very much for listening to me. Let us go forth and continue to build this country for God. It is all responsibility. And let us pray for each other. I pray for you and I ask you to continue to pray for me and to pray for God. I love this country and I love all of you. Thank you very much.